What's up guys, Jeeves here. If you're wondering why my poodle is strapped to the front wheel of my M2, it's because he has anxiety. If I were to leave him in the apartment, he'd rip the whole place apart. So I was like, oh, I'll just bolt him onto the wheel. It's a bolt, he's a bolt-on poodle. The point of today's video is about the new spy shots of the 370Z that's being tested at the Nürburgring. The Z has been out in the United States, I think since August of 2002. They refreshed it to the 370Z in 2009 uh, so it's a 10 year old car. It's gone from 286 horsepower up to 332 horsepower with the Nismo version having 350 horsepower. The torque has stayed within the 280, 270 foot pound region. The reason that this is exciting is because Nissan does not do this often. And one of the things I hope they focus on would be weight and then also having a hybrid powertrain. Now the two of those do not go together. I'm fully aware of that. Uh, but with the technology and the way it's advancing, I think the only way for Nissan to really stick out in this segment is going to be for them to focus in those two areas. They sit. Doug DeMuro made a video saying that the Nissan 370Z Nismo is outdated and overpriced. And I think he's actually correct. The only area I think the car is outdated would be like the infotainment system. I think the suspension, I think the shifting, I think all of that is good. It's just mainly the infotainment system. It's really weak. Now, I have personally never driven a 350 or 370Z, so if there's anyone out there in Phoenix that would be willing to let me re review their car, I would love to do that. Question is though, how much of a market is out there for a new 370Z? And I really don't know. It's very interesting. I was just looking at Nissan's website and the cars that they're putting money into, SUVs and everyone is moving to some form of electric power. What really shocked me is the Nissan GTR Nismo is a $210,000 car. I think there is no way that that car should ever be over $200,000. It really should never be over one fifty, one sixty. I think even that is crazy. But that's what they're selling it as. I don't know how many they're moving. It's probably only a couple hundred a year, if that. But I just couldn't believe how expensive that was. Back to the 370Z. I think what it should target is something like the BMW M2. I think it should undercut the Supra. It should be a car that's priced around, it start, well, it, you know, if it's gonna start in the low 30s, which it probably will with the Nismo version, I think still should be under $50,000 and give people who are looking to buy the Supra or the M2, it should be a no brainer for them to say, well, why would I buy that when I can get this Nismo version at way less with better technology, futuristic power, and better efficiency. One of the most important areas for manufacturers to focus on is going to be the weight of cars. Electric power is coming. It's, it's absolutely coming. If you haven't driven a Tesla yet, check out the card at the top of your screen because I drove one and it blew my mind. And I love internal combustion engines, or as the Tesla freaks call them, ICE internal combustion, it's terrible. That's where everything is going towards and I think if you're gonna be able to create an efficient car, we have to focus on things like carbon fiber bodies. I know it's expensive, but that's the only way you're gonna be able to get emissions and still have lively driving and have good driving dynamics uh, built into a, a firm chassis. So if you're new to my channel, I have a Focus ST and I just recently purchased this BMW M2. So if you're interested in either of those cars, I have uh, 146 videos I've done in the Focus ST and I'll be doing just as many with this, uh, with doing upgrades and driving and, and up, updates every five to 10,000 miles, things like that, and going through absolutely every tiny feature on the car. Um, and the reason I do that is because YouTube is where I go to look for information on things when I'm purchasing. So I've viewed almost every M2 video on the internet um, and there's not a channel out there that's totally dedicated to this car like I did with my Focus ST. So the ST videos are going to continue uh, and the M2 videos are just getting started up. So if you're interested in either of that content plus car reviews, definitely subscribe here. I think it's very exciting news that Nissan is going to be upgrading the 370Z. There's very little detail out there on it. There was rumors that it was gonna be a uh, some type of crossover model, which would just be disgusting. That's not happening. They're already testing at the Nürburgring, so they're serious about making it a performance car. The details are just very slim right now. You can see that these pictures here from CarBuzz, there's holes uh, in the front of the car, almost looks like a rally car 
or something like that for additional cooling. So I'm not sure exactly what they're testing. Um, I think you can see a, uh, an intercooler in there. It's not totally uh, horizontal. It's right in between at like a 45 degree angle. If you zoom in on the photo, you can see that. I'm just excited they're testing at the Nürburgring. They're gonna continue to make another performance version of the car because it seems like every performance version manual transmission car that comes out lately, everyone writes this is the last of its time, but yet we keep pushing forward. Uh, I just read an article the other day that said the manual transmission, there was an article written that was dying in the 1960s. And here we are today, it's a 2018 M2, still has a manual transmission. Probably the best thing that's happened to manual transmissions is the automatic rev match on downshifting. That is the coolest thing. It makes driving it so pleasurable and it does it right on the money. The only thing, the downside of this is it should have a button to turn it off. Uh, the only way you can turn it fully off in this car is if you turn all the traction control settings off. So it's a give or take. There's other cars like the Veloster N that has a button where you just click it and it turns off the auto rev match. That's another car that's just unbelievable. That's the update. Let me know what you guys know about the 370Z in the comments below. I'm really excited about this car. I still think we're about five years out from it actually being in showrooms but it's starting now. Again, if anyone in the Phoenix area has a 350Z or 370Z, be willing to let me review it. I'm 100% in, would love to experience that car. It's one of the few cars I haven't driven. If you haven't subscribed already, please do, or please at least think about it. You don't have to. Thank you all for watching. Appreciate your support. Like the video if you're still with me, and we'll see you next time.